The Square Ball Podcast. Hello there, and welcome to Propaganda for this week. Down here with Michael and Moscow White in a show that is brought to you by, can you guess who it is? Is it Solicitors? It is. Are they Leeds based? They are Leeds based, but you know what? They can work outside of Leeds and uh-huh. on what you call the internet. Sounds like you're describing to me Levi Solicitors. Yeah. Yeah, that's who I'd guess it is. What I think would be good at this point is for you to tell me about their range of services, if any spring to mind we could... Pa- Legal services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all of them. Well, they do a lot of them, yeah. Yeah. Any three that... They don't do um, They do not do criminal law. Why do we concentrate on what they do do? I'm right? just, just trying to vary the message. They don't do criminal law. They don't do family law. They do more or less everything else. Right. Such as Will's probate conveyancing. Yep. Award winning as well? Yeah. No, no less. Award I think it was something like sexiest solicitors or something, wasn't it? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, good. Um, where can you find details of uh, the services that they do do if you want to research this matter further? Their website, which is levisolicitors.co.uk. <laughs> and then if you put slash the square ball, yeah. that's where you can get a discount. 10% discount on your legal fees. levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Let's get into it then. Shall we? Um, oh, I can't wait to hear how happy Coventry are whilst our promotion chase is derailed. Recorded, yeah. We're recording this the morning of the Sunderland game, so we could all be happy again by tomorrow. Or not. Or not. Yeah. Or not. We will see, won't we? Uh, yeah, I've kept it pretty light on Coventry. Did listen to a fair bit. They were pleased. That's not how it works. You win a game of football. Fine. They were pleased. Let's listen to Matt then his girlfriend from Matt SB's YouTube channel. Get it over and done with. Fine. Wow, what a win that was. I mean, before the game, we all said, oh, we'd take, we'd take a draw, we'd snatch around off for a draw. But to win that was absolutely insane. It was squeaky bum time right at the end because they obviously pulled one back. And you think, oh, OK, they're more than capable. They've got the quality to get another. But no, we saw it out. Robbins made the right selections again to turn more defensive and see the game out. And oh, what a win. We needed that three points, and that makes up for losing against Cardiff. The only thing is... The teams around us also got the win, so we've not really made up any ground on Norwich and West Brom, but what a win that was. Coventry were so up for it today, and for the first 50-55 minutes, we were better than Leeds, which I didn't think I'd be saying. I genuinely really rate them, but we had to dig in deep because Leeds United did show their quality for the final 35 minutes or so and really pushed and could have snatched something. I mean, really should have done with the chance right at the end, but Coventry just did enough. We got the two goals. If you and your wife did a YouTube channel together, Michael, mm. how do you reckon that'd go? I don't know what it would be about. Right. And I'm not into... I know there are some people who do like a kooky, where a couple... Oversharing. Doing YouTube stuff that's cutesy. Yeah. Not for me, that. Not well, for me. Well, she's she's in HR, isn't she? So she could maybe do stuff on HR. I presume you're an expert as well. Uh, more or less. Yeah. More or less hear enough about it. So yeah. I, I know I know bits and bobs. What what's your big what's your big takeaway from the old HR world? What's what's your Um just lots to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> lots to talk about, yeah. That's that's the gist of it. What are the big three in I, HR? I, I listen some of the times. <laughs> right. Uh, hiring <laughs> hiring firing? firing. Yeah, yeah. And um Promotions? Disciplinaries. Right. That's the thing, isn't it? Resources. 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 Humans resources, um, and the allocation of humans and resources. There you go. Well done. Moscow, save us from this. With, uh, why? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't dig that hole. No, I did. I know. I don't know where to go now. Uh, it's nice that they're happy anyway. Yeah. En- enjoy your lives together. That, Great. Was, that was just really the gist of all the commentary stuff I found. Any so, mention of a statue to Joel Piru? Uh, walks for the miss. No, mm. no, but he scored a goal. He did. He did score one. I would have preferred him to have scored the second one as well. That would have been my preferred outcome. Yeah, I did see some footage of that from the Coventry end. It looked a very good chance from from there too. It was just like someone behind the goal filming it and you were like, it's wide open. I think I think any kind of view of that chance is probably going to make it look like a good chance because it was, it was a good yeah. chance. Yeah. Well set up, I think uh, underrated uh, Matt Yo Joseph's touch mm. through because it looked at first like, it's hard to tell whether that free kick was planned. Was it Furpo took it and it was um, rough? You think, oh, we've we've come up short, and then he kind of turns it around the corner into the box. And he, I think the thing I didn't catch at the time was that um, Joseph, as soon as the ball, like even before Piru has controlled it, 
Joseph's got his hands in the air. Like, yes. You, you mentioned that in your match report, didn't you? Yeah, I, I, wasn't, aw- I nice. wasn't aware of this fact until I read it on your match report, which is available at the squareball.net, no less. Um, they, they look cool to those goals when they go in and someone's already celebrating. Yeah. It's the sort of thing people pick up and afterwards they go, look, he knows he's going to score, but you probably miss all the times when people are half celebrating. Mm. I'm sure if you go back through, um, no, there's no, there's no need to pick on Pat Bamford, is there? No. Um, I think the, the, the early celebration is kind of the most convincing argument I've found for putting Joseph in, which um, uh, doesn't sound like Daniel Fark is too keen to do that with his uh, spirit defensive, how much running and work Pat Bamford puts in, but just the idea of somebody who is so confident that as soon as the ball is in the six-yard box, like, yes, goal, which is never the feeling you get, particularly from Pat, unless he's 35 yards out, in which case he's like, yep, I'll score from here, but then four yards from goal, he'll still be, and everyone's a little bit unsure. Almost the ideal world would be to still have Pat Bamford in the team, but to have Matt, uh, Matteo Joseph with him going like, I believe in you. This will be a goal. Go on, you can do it. And Pat to be like, yeah, fucking Joseph believes in me. This is going in the net. Um, I mean, we, we didn't work did, with Piru, but might work with Pat. I was going to say, we, we did in fantasy commentary go for a big man, big man strike partnership. Why not do it? Right. Georgie as a third. Because he's quite a big man too, in fact. Yeah. Big man, big man, big man. You don't see that very often. I mean, you could drop... Georgie, because or, mm. or acknowledge the fact that the guys just had a hernia operation and be like, do you maybe want to just have a night off? Um, and then Piru and Bamford as a front two should be enough for Sunderland, because as far as I can tell, they're rubbish and we're going to beat them easily anyway. Beat. So why not just play, you know, Matteo <laughs> Joseph and we'll stick Charlie Creswell up front? He, he is unfortunately still one of the least sick members of our squad, because Glenn Kamara and Ampadu can't get off the toilet. Jamie Shackleton something all the time rode on what was wrong with him back spasms back spasms that was it right yeah oh god you, I, I can see apart, i can see you uh, you've been your back spasmy ptsd uh, michael which Again, incidentally I... kept tyler adams out of bournemouth's squad entirely what a back spasm mm, he woke up uh with that problem and then just uh cried off the game whereas joe roden not a problem warrior Woken up with a back spasm, and he's like, "No, I'll play. I'll play more games." <laughs> I've enjoyed the difference between uh, last season and this season. I've enjoyably reached that age now where I can sneeze and be concerned about the outcome where my back's concerned. Mm. Go, oh, that's that's twinged. Careful on the dishwasher as well. Raw, oh, really? Is right. it? A, is it a threat? I did it. I did a, a bad injury on the. dishwasher. Why were you sitting on the dishwasher? If only that was the case, that would have been worthy the of it. Inside the dishwasher. <laughs> I did have a conversation last night with my 12-year-old and he asked me, "Could do you think I could fit inside the dishwasher? I thought, let's not try that. But I reckon, I reckon he's, he's, quite, could, he's quite little. Yeah, could fold it. You'd have to take, obviously take out the um, the racks, but yeah, yeah. easy going. Maybe he, he'd probably survive the eco wash, but I don't think the intensive wash, he it, it no. won't come out. It won't well. work either because the things need to spin, don't they? That's true. No, that's true. I once watched a YouTube video of someone who put um, a GoPro inside a dishwasher right. to show how it works. So if you want to send us some why. footage of your children... <laughs> Uh, crammed in, in a inside, dishwasher with a inside, GoPro inside ho- household appliances. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. It's a terrible idea, isn't it? Yeah, don't yeah. do it. You shouldn't do that. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, ahead of Sunderland. I mean, you're you're doing the big talk there, Moscow. Terrifyingly so. Genuinely, how do you feel? Meh. Yeah. Uh, I sort of I flip between thinking it's going to be all right. Oh my god, I'm terrified. The thing is, the margins between it being all right and not being all right are quite slim now, aren't they? Yeah, there are all- not. All season, they were kind of at arm's length from each other, weren't they? And I was able to compartmentalise them, but they're just kind of converging now, I think, because they were at the business end of the season, as the kids call it. Yeah, and it's it's the point where even Farker would have to acknowledge we need to look at other results. Yeah. Because he did say six games left, didn't he, was when you look at it. And mm. I feel like I'm looking at it quite a bit at the moment, which is not very comfortable. Yeah, I think the thing about tonight is that it sort of felt inevitable that at some point we would lose in 2024 because to go through the entire second half of the season unbeaten feels like a really difficult thing to do. The other really difficult thing to do is to go an entire season unbeaten at home, which we are on course to do unless we don't. So tonight is probably a It's really... amazing how they become a millstone, isn't it? Ah! Yeah, exactly. So you try to uh, keep these things, these impossible runs going. And um, yeah, to lose both of those records within four days would be, um, that would be a bit of a, a buzzkill. Are <laughs> oh, they good to get yes. it out of the way before the playoffs? Yeah, that's true. Not to not to make our first uh, home defeat of the season to be the second in the leg second of the leg of the playoffs. Yeah. Um, but also, I think the one thing about because um, there's always a wobble, and 
So to lose that game with still five games to play. And if you take, you know, old people like us go to the uh, olden days, what did we do before we were getting promoted in 2010? We were losing games all over the place, making absolutely massive the whole thing and took it down the wire. Uh, 1992, when we won the entire damn football league, like about this, this is around the point where we went and lost 4-0 at Manchester City and we looked atrocious and all we had to do was drop Cantona because he was terrible. And then uh, 1990 getting promoted. Um, this is, you know, we lost to Barnsley going into the last week. And I think... That God, was that, I can, that, do you know what? That still echoes down the ages to me, that one. I know you can see that the video. I've got the video back at home and nothing to play it on these days, but it's on YouTube as well. Um, People who were there remember that game. I do. It's I've, one of those yeah. things that everyone, everyone who, if you ever mentioned someone, they're like, "Oh God, I remember that." It was just the atmosphere was awful. It was doom. Yeah, it was doom. There was a, just a feeling of doom about it. It's because we were that close to it. And then with Millstones, nineteen seventy four, when we were, we started with the greatest unbeaten record of any first division team um, ever. ever. Yeah. And then by the end of it, we were um, still. We won the league one game from the end. Um, so QPR on the final day was a, a coronation because uh, Liverpool had drawn with Arsenal in the week. But yeah, we got beaten by Stoke and then just started losing all over the place. So these things happen, and Leicester are a good example as well. So it's never smooth, but I feel like losing, it's probably better to have, if there's an upside to losing, it's doing it with five games still to go rather than maybe the penultimate game. And then it throws us into some kind of... If Imagine if we'd been... Uh, the penultimate game of the season, and if we'd won, we would have sealed promotion, and then we lose that, and then we have to play Southampton. Lots of stuff going on there. Whereas at least this way, uh, we've got a bit of time to really um, build up the pain and the misery before <laughs> losing in the playoffs. Well, actually, I've I've got the fixtures in front of me by day. Uh, I've laid out the calendar between now and the end of the season. Left out the days when there's nothing happening in between because it would take up mm. far too much space, but. We play obviously Sunderland at home and then Blackburn at home. So maybe I've, I've, the, the talk I've been talking to myself, the self-talk, I've been saying, right, okay, we've got Sunderland at home. They've got nothing to play for. Blackburn at home, they're pretty much all right. Not a great deal to play for. So if we can, re, if we can get the defeat out of our system, rebuild momentum with two home wins, mm -hmm. and then we go into the Middlesbrough game with more confidence. And by the time we've won the Middlesbrough game, we can then go into the QPR game with more confidence. And then we've played those four games and we'll have one game left, which is a Southampton game. At that point, after the QPR game, when we've won four in a row, um, Ipswich still have three games left, which is nuts. So there's the Saturday night, which is Hull away, won't be easy. And then Coventry away, won't be easy. Before Huddersfield at home, will be easy. <laughs> yeah, because that was, it was mentioned of, uh, oh, maybe uh, Huddersfield will be will be playing to stay up. And I just, I just picture us last season on the last day against Spurs when we conceded after 90 <laughs> seconds. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Done. That's done. that's kind of what I'm expecting from Huddersfield on the last day. But um, yeah, I think pressure-wise, it does feel like even though Ipswich have got the um, the advantage of the position at the moment, just the, the difficulty of the fixtures and the number of them feels like they have the tougher time. Uh, but the thing is, they've been that good all season that I wouldn't bet against them being absolutely fine. So if they do it, fair enough. Um, enjoy the Premier League. Um, and... Um, somebody just get those points deducted off Leicester ASOP yeah on the Ipswich actually and how well they're doing I did listen to a bit of the second tier which I think is one of the people you were angry at earlier in the season for for daring to speculate about about Leeds United um, <laughs> just to say the second tier is a it's an all-round championship it's a championship podcast, hence the yeah, name yeah, yeah podcast but uh, I have no business talking about Leeds <laughs> you can talk about the other, although, 20, although, other 23 I, I did, on the um on our form generally, they said Somerville has been in bad form recently. And I was like, well, hang on, he scored that really good goal against Watford. He won and scored a penalty literally the game before we lost at Coventry. Mm. I mean, so. Relative to his own standards, he has had a, a bit of a dip, hasn't he? But his standards are so exceptionally high that he's still, yeah. you know, it's like if you're turning in a 9 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10, what a dip. And I think he got an assist. Did he get an assist against Watford as well? I can't remember. It feels like he's done plenty of decent stuff recently anyway. But um, anyway, this was, uh, this was them discussing how good Ipswich are after a defeat. Their record of bouncing back after a defeat this season is incredibly impressive. They had only previously lost five times this season, and this is what happened after each of those defeats. After their first one, they went on to win four in a row. After their second, they went on to win four in a row again. Their third one, they went on to draw against Leicester. The fourth one, they went on to draw against West Brom. And their most recent one, they won three in a row after that. So that's a really promising record. 
Oh, if you love a bloody Ipswich so much, why don't you go and marry him? We've done well as well, though, after defeats. That's yeah. what I did in my head. The only one that, apart from the last time we lost, which caused a bit of a wobble. Um, but yeah, early in the season, we were, we were losing a the game, then we'd win a few. Uh, and we do generally go on a run that just completely picks it up. The only bit that was a proper wobble was when we lost at Sunderland, and then we somehow beat Ipswich in the middle of it, but then we had back-to-back defeats at Preston and West Brom, and that did feel a little bit wheels coming off the far crowd stuff was beginning to weirdly. <laughs> it, it was, there were people saying it. Although there were people saying it when we literally lost our first game of the year. But that's Twitter, isn't it? Yeah. It's just mad, isn't it? But I think I think we'll be okay. Yes. Yes. I mean okay, good. like in in the long term, in the sort of like bigger picture of will we all just and have like lives? <laughs> it will be okay. It'll be okay. It will be okay. Yeah. It will. It's only a daft knockabout, isn't it? It will. And um But God it means so much. <laughs> and we won't have to see Neil Warnock again. No. Because he's been on talk sport and he's he retired. He's been talking about his retirement and the clear hurt that he's felt from being snubbed by Plymouth. When you said you would have taken it, you'd have helped him. Uh, did you speak to Shannon about it? Did you speak to Oh him no, no, listen, I'm retired now, Alan. That's no, but you just done, said now. you'd have helped him. Yeah, I would have done, but you know, not now. Not now. It's uh, it's all done and uh, and dusted now. And I'm looking forward one. to like Ali says, I'm looking forward to going around some of the islands now up there and, and New- I've got some bucket lists now. Do you notice it's always framed as helped them? It's never I was thinking that. taken a job or been appointed. It's always framed sympathetically through his eyes. It's arm's length. Anything that goes well, I helped with. If it, if things are fucked, then I, tr- I, I, tried. I was only I, tr- here to, I was only here to try to help. The other key thing there is that you know, sort of the sort about whether he should have been offered the the Plymouth job. Um, and the question was, did you speak to Sharon about it? As far as I'm aware, Sharon is not the chief executive of Plymouth Argyle <laughs> Football Club. Maybe that's the thing that, that they were expecting to say, oh, lads, Sharon thinks I should do the job. All right, well, if Sharon thinks you should you should work here, come on down. It'll Give kill- Sharon the job. Why didn't Sharon have the job? It'll kill him if Plymouth stay up without him, won't it? He'd yeah. love to have gone in there and taken credit for it, but they probably will. And then he'd be like, well... You know they've done a they've done a great job there, but I could have uh, I, I, I've offered to help anyway. Sharon, Sharon said uh, asked me some tough questions in the interview um, on not taking responsibility for anything. They do raise what happened with him at Aberdeen, uh, and he had this to say about it. What uh, happened? At, what uh, happened at the Dandy Dons? Come on! I was frozen solid. I couldn't move. <laughs> so I had to leave. Uh, no, wait, wait, listen. I, one or two things cropped up, and I thought he was—he was a good time. I only went in to help him out, and uh, it, although it. Um, it didn't work out. I managed to get him through the cup. I was glad I got we beat Kilmarnock in the quarter final. We got Celtic now, Alan, haven't we? That's right. Oh. In the semi, uh, the good group of lads. Uh, I, I tell you what, Ali, though, what I what I did think about when I was there is, you know, if you have a year, a, a year as a, a club like Aberdeen, and you've yeah. got two transfer windows, and you've got an opportunity of bringing three or four players in, I think you've got a chance now against the top two. Mm-hmm. I think if you bring the right ones in, uh, I mean, the Aberdeen have gone. They're all data, are you with me? They yes. bring them in from abroad on data, and which I'm not sure about that. But uh, I look, I look at the league, and I thought it's a, a bit closer. Than, I mean, those two are miles ahead at, at, at the minute financially, aren't they? Yes. Um, I had to laugh, Ali, with the VAR. We have a good down here, don't we? <laughs> I mean, VAR in Scotland. <laughs> you had to take your packing up, Alan, and a cup of coffee to have a to sit down Is and wait right? while right? while while they decided what they were doing up there. I, Always needs his players, doesn't he? He always needs two transfer windows. He can't coach what's there. It's just not coachable. He's basically saying that if I'd have had a couple of transfer windows, I'd have won that league. But It's amazing. Nobody's thought of the, the, the idea before that to break the old firm hegemony in Scotland is just bring Paddy Kenny in. <laughs> and pelts. Get pelts in. Yeah, get pelts. The, the other thing as well is the... David um, Norris just retired, didn't he? So that's that's mm. probably because... He was just waiting for the call, maybe. Once he found out that Warnock wasn't going to be there for the next transfer window, I was like, oh, I'm not going to get a job. Plymouth, Plymouth... Oh, he's not doing that either. I'll the, just, um, just to further expand the point about I only, I only went in to help them. Mm-hmm. So you get f- a further expansion on which, that, which, how it's couched in particular language. I only went in to help them. It was I didn't go in to do a full professional job. I only went in to help them. Minimising, minimising, minimising. Which he failed to do. So yeah. I was saying. They didn't win any of the seven league games. Got them through to a semi-final with Celtic. He basically won one game against Kilmarnock because the other cup game was against, was it a Bonnie Rig? Yeah. Athletic. Athletic Rangers, yeah. something like that. Basically some like a park football 
team, more or less. <laughs> I mean, they are, they, I think they are in the four professional divisions now. Bonnie Rigger. I think yeah, they're in like no Scottish way. Division League Two or whatever. Yeah, I'm not we, it. we looked some weeks ago. They can't. Have, they, they'll have at least uh, like a most of about three hundred people watching them. Right. It's not proper football. I'm not having it. You're not, you're not I'm not having it. it. And he still managed to not have any possession against them. The last team time a team other than Rangers or Celtic won it. By the way, was eighty four, eighty five. Right. But Does he have Paddy Kenny in goal. That's the thing. No one's thought about it ever. No one's thought about it. It's Bonnie Rig Rose Athletic is the name of the team. What league are they in? Uh, they are in Scottish League Two. They are currently eighth, placed eighth out of the uh, the ten teams. Okay. Well, well done, Neil. It was a great win that people will talk about for years to come, I'm sure. Just looking at the attendances, by the way, 625 was at their last home game against Peterhead. I mean, that's distinctly... It's not even... That's like below National League it's North, double what you it? claimed. <laughs> okay, fine. You fantasist, Normanton. <laughs> All right, fine. Do you want to hear what he's got to say about the uh, the promotion race in the Championship anyway? Because he's obviously an expert in the Championship. But in Scotland, he mainly knows about Rangers and Celtic. Yeah. Yeah, because they're doing. They've done quite well over recent years. I whatever, noticed that. Whatever, yeah. whatever he said no. uh, on there, um, on the promotion race in England, and I've bleeped out a little bit here as well because there's, there's a part of a quiz for you in here too. It's difficult to say who it is. Leicester should go up, but now you'd think, you know, Ipswich have always been the, the ones that's given no chance when you look at the pundits, but McKenna's done a fantastic job. Hasn't he? You know, on, on the, I know I know they've spent a bit of money, but in comparison with Leeds and Leicester, you know, they're, they're massive clubs with the massive squads, and I just love Ipswich, Alan. He's a, a bread and butter player, and yeah. I'd have him in my team. I'd have him in the trenches any day alongside me. If that's not Sam Morsey, I'll eat my hat. Yeah, it's got to be Morsey. <laughs> Play the clip. <laughs> I just love Sammy Morsey at Ipswich, Alan. <laughs> He's a, a bread and butter player, and yeah. I'd have him in my team. I'd have him in the trenches any day alongside me. Yeah, yeah. Sammy Morsey as yeah, well. Yeah, that's what we underrated is that it was. it's not Sam Morsey, it's Sammy Morsey. Well, Morsey so is obviously... No points. Already, he's already, if he was called Sam Morse, he'd call him Morsey. Yeah. Because he's he's already got the... Oh, e, we call e. him Code. He's yeah. Sammy. Sammy Morsey. Of course he is. Of course I mean, that's I the only went into trenches to help the lads go over the top. <sighs> Shut up. Next. Let's go one unbearable dickhead to another. Let's go Rory. Right. Talking about Chelsea and their... Could have current. had the Chelsea job or not, couldn't he? He, could, can, he doesn't like to talk about it. No, no, it doesn't bring that up very often. <laughs> I'd like, uh, you know, is, is uh, Poch going to make it to the end of the season? Is there still a chance that mm. Warnock could ask Sharon if he's allowed to take over at uh, Chelsea and then Sharon can go in there and give the job to Arneal? Do you see um, Chelsea Rory, just before we play the clip, he was uh, getting into some beef with WrestleMania fans over the weekend. Oh, so, yeah, saying so now it is um, childish or something. Yeah. Yeah, the general thrust being, you know, people dicking about, being theatrical, mm. putting on a stupid show for adults and so on. You see where I'm going with if you, this. If you like it, you like it, I suppose. And, yeah, so, yeah. and the same goes with Rory. Even it's, though... it's, a, it's a form of entertainment, whereas you can't say the same for Rory, can you? Exactly. A collection of distinctly average footballers. And I genuinely mean that. Never before in the Premier League era have Chelsea had such an abject collection of footballers i really do mean that honestly right which the whole grift which, prim- which pre uh, why, are, why are people giving him a platform the premier league era to be clear yeah that I've, I've done a bit of research here a few months ago i was ago. going to ask which season are you going for pre abramovich well, well their first premier league season their mm. big signings of the summer because you know it's all about signings were mal donaghy who was about 40 years old <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. john spencer nick colgan and robert fleck john spencer of the blues explosion um, I say yes. That yeah, one. yeah, that's exactly what I thought. That's what I thought of. Yeah, um, and they finished eleventh that season. They finished fourteenth the season after, then eleventh and eleventh. Um, I mean, if you go to that ninety two ninety three squad, they did have David Hopkin in it. Maybe, yeah. he, maybe he'd have been a good. If if Chelsea fans now were signing like the the modern version of that, they'd, they'd no doubt be delighted. You've got superstars in there like Frank Sinclair, um, Ian Pearce. Kevin Hitchcock, um, mm. really, really big name players who yeah. I'm sure your modern Chelsea fan are, are well and truly uh, au fait with. I mean, if you go to 93, 94, Dimitri Karin used to wear tracky bottoms, didn't he? So that he was did. pretty fun. That was not average. <laughs> and they get a lot of attention for that. Speaking of averages, their average attendance in that first Premier League season was under 19,000 as well. The halcyon so, days of Ken Bates, eh? So the, the kind of brilliant, 
this is Chelsea. That That's kind of what Chelsea were not long ago. And then a Russian arrived with a boatload of money and yeah. made them somehow S- think, Stolen money at that. It was stolen money, you could say, yeah. Yeah. I think we're, we're probably on safe ground now, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're not thought of particularly favourably at the minute. No, the old, good. Uh, the old oligarchs, I don't think. Um, yeah, so that's Rory spouting some bollocks. Right, what's next? We'll stick with Chelsea. We'll go with the byline. This is someone doing a watch-along. Um, Chelsea obviously came into the Sheffield United game off the back of that thrilling 4-3 win against Scum, didn't they? Where they scored two goals in like 97 and 99 minutes or something like that. So he's watching them winning 2-1 away at Sheffield United and here he is. He's bemoaning the fact that it's been a bit of a boring win as we go into injury time. Such a dull game today. <laughs> in comparison, from one extreme to the other, from, from United to this, it's just night and day. An absolute slog. Sheffield United, down! it's 2-2. Two, two. Fuck! Oh, fuck off. Honest to shit in Christ. Fucking twats. Well, there you go. There you go. Fucking call your European football what it is. Um, Non-existent is what I would call it. Fucking absolutely bottled it. We have bottled it once again. Well, that's the end of that. That's the end of that. European football, absolutely fucking no chance now. Dropping two points right at the death like that. Ridiculous. Become a laughing stock after what we did against United to now go and draw against fucking Sheffield United. Genuinely, I had no idea that there was the result until you've just told me until yeah. we played that clip. I had no idea that game was taking place. Yeah, it happened. Just a just a So not they're not the laughing stock, no one cares. Dead rubber in it. And yeah. also don't they don't want that European football. Like they don't they'll get in it and they'll moan like fuck next year about oh, oh it's, we've got to play Thursday in Bryce oh, Lava. It's conference yeah. league, it's really annoying. We've yeah. only got a small squad. And aren't the like financial fair play restrictions even more onerous mm. if you're playing in Europe. I don't know if it, Todd Bowley's mind can handle another set of rules being imposed on him signing 45 players. Maybe um, Sheffield United should go into Europe. I quite like to see Chris Wilder on a European tour. <laughs> Treat him like a stag do. <laughs> Game's Thursday. Yeah, I'm going to go over Tuesday. <laughs> make, a make, a pop, make a long week of it. I'm just going to go throw some... Uh, Patio furniture around the town square, that kind of a thing. Coming back Wednesday because you just don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't find anywhere that did a full English. Yeah, not Sheffield. <laughs> um, we'll stick with uh, Premier League knobheads and go Flying Pig United. So I've just mentioned the Chelsea scum game. This is Flying Pig United after that Chelsea comeback. We had it in the palm of our fucking hand! The overall display of this United side under Ten Hag this season has been fucking shit! Listen. If you get a sexually transmitted disease like syphilis, you best get yourself down the old gum clinic and get some fucking antibiotics and treatment for it. You know what I mean? You don't just let it go until your fucking head falls off. You know what I mean? Why the fuck are we continuing with our fucking head falling off, mate? Well, that's a sensible and proportionate internet response, isn't it, Michael? Have you you ever caught a disease that's made your head fall off? Does it look like it? No, no. Mine did, mine did once come off, but did I just managed off. to get it back on. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Strange, isn't it? Um, gone straight into the old sexually transmitted disease. Yeah, they should hook them up with the old uh, Leicester lads. It's good that we've got... Um, that's kind of what, where Ten Hag now is sitting. I know, obviously, we've had the war criminal Arteta. Mm. There was Raheem Sterling and um, Pochettino, both terrorists. Mm-hmm. A while ago, and now Ten Hag is a sexually transmitted disease. Syphilis. Syphilis. Right. The sort that makes your head fall off. Yeah. The classic kind, presumably. A real bad one. A real bad case. Right then. Uh, hey, speaking of the Leicester lads, you've got some here, haven't you? <laughs> they did a stream. They did a stream last night. Um, was, it, was it a stream of bodily fluids, per, per chance? Um, I mean, they didn't actually mention the, the wanking, but... The it, wanking. The, the wanking. Which, if if you are a new viewer or a listener, wanking or some if you, wanking, if you're a new viewer or listener, that seemed to be a, a recurring theme, didn't it? On their streams, there's a lot of bodily fluid chat, yeah, yeah, jizzing it, and things like that. So instead, this was the intro to it. Again, I didn't watch the the whole thing. I actually, I ignored them, and then I went on YouTube later in the evening, and it, it, you get a notification say they are live now. So I was like, oh, fine, fine, <laughs> go on, I'll go, I'll go into it. So this was his what, intro. What, what a hero you are. This was his intro to it, and it then led into a bewildering montage of just photos of empty lead streets which with streets? Some, 
some music just specifically like city center or yeah suburbs. like yeah like city center streets but you know just like the head morning. the head right like on the morning when it's shut everything's shut and right. no one's about it was just pictures like that brigger and he, he's obviously spent time putting it together over some music name a street in the Leeds city center moscow duncan street excellent choice good choice the duncan open again now i think isn't it yeah maybe if you, if you want to go in there for a a pint. cheap, a cheap pint, mm-hmm. I suppose. Um, he does slightly ruin his, his own montage by at one point flicking to someone else who's waiting to come on the stream and she's chewing a finger, which, <laughs> which kind of ruins the impact. But this was uh, is that this a metaphor. Is, this was how he starts the show. Hello, good evening, good day, good morning, good afternoon, good night, goodbye. Hello, welcome along to the show. This is LTIDT from Leicester Till I Die. Thank you for joining us, whether you are watching on YouTube or listening via your favourite podcast platform. You are most welcome, uh, unless you're a Leeds fan and look, what are you doing here? Uh, and I love the fact that um, this seems to have got one or two Leeds fans back up. Um, but I just want to play this. Uh, bear with me. We'll bring the guests in in a second. But to all the Leeds fans out there, you were all over my platform uh, before Coventry beat you. You were commenting. There was It was probably 70%, 30% comments Leeds to Leicester fans, and that's 70% Leeds fans, when you were top of the league. Two weeks technically one game because it was an international break. That's how long you were top. I think it's 31 weeks we've, we've been top this season. Bit of difference, but hey, look, never mind. It's all about going up. I'm not bragging the fact that we're top. I'm enjoying it, uh, that we've gone back to where, you know, to the top of the league. But this is having to go with all those Leeds fans. I had nothing better to do than go and watch all the um, all the Leicester fans uh, shows. That's all I can say. This is... This is uh, for you Leeds fans. Tell you what, he's edgy, isn't he? <laughs> so that's when it went Poor. into that. What are you doing here? Just keep an eye. Yeah. Because I feel someone should. Right. Yeah. I mean, the old 70-30 split of Leeds fans to Leicester fans, I don't think, as the kids would say, that's not the dub you think it is, <laughs> is it? Anyway, that the clip then plays... Um, and he's he's not done because he's back with some more. I, mean, I can only assume he's scripted these put downs because they're so damn good. So to all you Leeds fans, stop shagging the uh, cows up there. Stop watching Emmerdale. Go and support your team. Don't spend your life on Leicester channels. I know we're better than Leeds channels, but hey, you know what I mean? Get a life. Get a life. I don't know where you've all gone, though. That's the question. Kate. Can I ask you, have you seen any Leeds fans about? I've not seen any for a while, no, it's gone very quiet. It has, hasn't it? Uh, Dave, have you seen any recently? Yeah, I have. He was. He runs the uh, dog and duck in Bogner. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but he's a nice guy. Yeah, I as, don't as, know where they've all disappeared to. Well, as really were two of those it. lads we had in last week, they were all right, weren't they? Was they were, Steve, but I, or... I literally, every time I posted a video, whether it was a Let's Talk Leicester, Watch Along, um, you know, a review, a preview, it, even previews for, like, the Leicester-Birmingham game, Leeds fans were all on there. We're top, we're top, and all this. Suddenly, they lose the commentary. We go back top. Not a word. Not a word. But anyway... I just thought I'd play that. You can that. If you do want to watch that video again, by the way, it is available on Leicester Till I Die TV for all you Leeds fans, but I've probably pissed them off because I've turned off commenting. <laughs> <laughs> they said he's better than the Leeds channels. I think he's right because that's Leicester Till I Die TV 1. Yeah. And they've got two as well. I mean, we've got two, have we? It's true. It's true. And double the pleasure, twice the fun. I don't think you can brag about Leeds fans not commenting anymore when you've turned off the comments. <laughs> Where have they gone now? You can't, they don't comment in at all. They're all running the dog and duck. <laughs> what, the one in Bogner? I don't know about that one specifically. That <laughs> wasn't a joke, he was just... That, blo- that guy just... <laughs> <laughs> Christ. Dan, please. Dan, please, please. Um, That's what he did. Yeah, the guy... Uh, it wasn't a joke. The guy... Uh, there is a pub in Bogner called Dog and Duck and it seems to be run by a Leeds fan and yeah. that, guy lives in, <laughs> that guy lives in Bogner. Right, super. It's so. got four and a half um, out of five on Trip Advancer. A trip advisor, <laughs> sorry, advancer. Um, the dog and duck has seamlessly transitioned into a traditional pub, 
making it, uh, it's evolved from micro pub roots, embraced tradition with a diverse array, cascales, craft beers and ciders, looks surrounded right, by I'll untapped cocktails, yeah. Should we go? Um, landlord Jamie Boyle's warm welcome set the tone for a bustling evening. So, um, and they have a, a musical trio called Super Strings. We're adding to the lively ambience. Sounds good. So if you are in Bogner, or a lot of people go on holiday to Bogner, don't they? Did Still, they? yeah, it's a holiday destination, isn't it? Uh, well, yeah, it certainly is. I always felt that we had a lovely time. The the day, no, it's Bangor. I'm thinking of. Anywho, Bogner. The, the name of it does does it dirty? I think mm. Bogner. But Regis has got that royal um, Cyril. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> thing for, to it. for the benefit of anybody wondering, by the way, it's some miles just east. Uh, sorry, west of Brighton on the south coast. It's sort of between Brighton and Portsmouth on the south coast. So, mm. for anybody who's not geographically au fait with where Bogner Regis is, it seems to be a very good pub run by a big Leeds fan. So. Go there for a pint. And if it's not as good as TripAdvisor makes out to be, take it up with them. What about TripAdvisor? Uh, yeah, we'll, they write it? we'll hold all um, responsibility for um, bad, uh, misleading reviews on TripAdvisor. Good stuff. Right, anyway. Uh, apologies for the man who's in Bognor Regis, by the way. It's his mic that's crackly. Right. Uh, there's nothing you can do about that. It's what happens when fluids get mixed with electric. Um, but here they are. They're talking about the EFL Awards that yep. we were on about. So we have... Farker nominated and Somerville and Archie Gray. They're discussing at length why Moresca hasn't been nominated, which is, a, I suppose, in some ways it's fair enough because they have been top of the league for the majority 30, of it. 31 weeks. 31 weeks. And I suppose the other argument will be the if, cheat you've, if you've got resources cheat you shouldn't have. Then you shouldn't. But anyway, so they're saying it's an EFL conspiracy that he's not been nominated for manager of the year. Right. But then Kieran Dewsbury Hall has been nominated for Championship Player of the Year. So should we find out And why? do you know why that is? He didn't we... cheat. Let's find out, let's find out, let's find out. But the fact that he's been nominated seems crazy to me when they won't nominate our manager. It just seems backsided, you know, that, well, we won't nominate any Leicester players because or Leicester manager because they've done this, but, oh, Dewsbury Hall's in it. Hmm. This, this, oh, I can't even say what I'm thinking. Because they want to sell you to a Premier League club. Mm. Calm mm. down, Dave. It's not good for your blood pressure. Oh, it just drives um, me nuts. Uh, they want to sell him and promote him to a Premier League club away from Leicester. So what well, better way to do it? Yeah. You know, you think you don't think these things happen anymore, do you? Outside Russia and China, but they do. <laughs> they happen in the bloody football league. <laughs> So can I get, let me just check this. Let's run this by you. You understand the context there. So Maresca, the bald fraud, has not been nominated because it's a conspiracy for some uh, reason. Well, because the EFL won't allow him to win because they he's don't want to. They, they won't allow Leicester people to win because of they've lost this case against the football uh, against yeah. Leicester. So that so that's the cons the conspiracy. They can't go in. They they cannot go in. Leicester banned from it. Apart from the one that's in. Apart from the one that is in, and he's only in because it's a conspiracy to sell him. Because they want to sell him. Yeah, which is part of the whole uh, PSR sort of conspiracy thing, isn't it? It's a way of getting good players out of um, smaller clubs into bigger clubs. Is that to balance the books? You'd better sell that. You sell your best player to a much bigger club who can afford him. Which actually. I don't think it's a conspiracy, but it is more like it's a side effect of actually how the rules are working. So mm -hmm. I do have some sympathy there. Um, but I don't think that's why the EFL have nominated um, <laughs> KDH for this award. Um, that, that'd because, be an interesting meet in Moscow, wouldn't it? Well, I don't, yeah, I mean, and also it's kind of irrelevant because as we said about like Real Madrid coming to watch Archie Gray. It's not like they, they weren't going to do mm -hmm. that unless he got nominated for EFL... Um, did he get like Academy Player of the Year as well? Is he nominated for that? He's nominated. Jewsbury Hall. No, no Archie Gray. Oh, Archie Gray. Yeah, he's in. He's a. He's like. Is it Apprentice of the Year or something? Yeah, one that's... of them, or Trainee of the Year or something. One. One of them, and the Young Player. But of the, the year. idea that you know Manchester City would be like, well, unless first we've heard of this guy. Yeah, unless he's got EFL Player of the Year on his CV, we're just not not even going to look at him. And I mean, um, they will. They will be selling Jewsbury Hall. Well, they have this to because EFL are going to force them because otherwise they get a massive and even bigger points deduction than they would uh, otherwise. And they could sell to us. If we go up, they don't. We'll have him. He's a good player. Yeah, just say a much bigger club. Yeah, so. I like the idea that that guy, he can't even say what he's thinking. Yeah. His microphone's I, not working. I noticed mm. he couldn't say what he was thinking, <laughs> to be honest. Just regards to these all these people coming to watch Archie Gray, I go watch, you know, Margot Robbie films, but doesn't mean anything, does it? 
That's not happening. I'm not sure what, what you're getting at. Are you, are you suggesting people are just just coming for entertainment? To yeah, watch they, can, they can come and watch him, but that's not happening, is it? Okay, fair enough. What's not happening? Him leaving for silly clubs oh. like Real Madrid. He's not bothered about that. In the same way that Margot Robbie's, Robbie's not leaving her presumably very attractive husband to come and shack up with me in my <laughs> mid-40s in Bradford. I think it would be a nice change for her. <laughs> that's what they say, isn't how it? Quickly, change change quick, is as good as a rest. How quickly do you think she'd leave? <laughs> <laughs> He's got an international airport. Leeds Bradford, yeah. Shared with Leeds, obviously, from a Bradford perspective. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, should we listen to... Um, I was trying to distract myself, really, from promotion stuff this week. Um, and last week, from the EFL Awards, in fact, we were talking about the the lady who's nominated from Leeds for like a Lifetime Achievement Award from the catering department. And it, we mentioned Chilino cooking his pasta. Yes. And that, that glorious day. It's still on YouTube, I was pleased to discover. Um, Terry George still has it on his YouTube channel. It was also 10 years last week when his initial takeover was approved. So it's, Chilino stuff was kind of, was in the air. So I went back to watch the clip again. Um to set the scene here, I guess he's in the east stand or the west stand because he's in what looks like a big commercial kitchen. The players are in some sort of hospitality space waiting to have this meal. There's big, um, big bags, of, bags of like white powder knocking about as well. So it's like salt, isn't it? And the sugar salt, and stuff. The flour, like yeah. the, the kitchen stuff. Yeah. Um, but it, a lot of the clip just really encapsulates the vibe that Chilino brought to Leeds and the complete chaos of it. He's in a, a kitchen here with lots of professional chefs as well. Were you um, there? No. But I have, why? Why? Because I'm because I am a professional chef. Oh, you're just the expert, aren't you? In yeah. thing, in stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But no, I wasn't. I wasn't there for this one. But um, just presumably you, you're out catering a sort of an event or something. The the gritted teeth through which um these people are having to speak to Chilino is is great. So this is this is him first of all criticizing the ingredients he's been brought. But next time you have to have a big potato. That's one there. Big tomato. Big one. Big one. Fresh. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah, but next time I need more than six hours' notice. Come on, six hours' notice. It's hard to get Italian tomatoes. I got, I got, I got a lot. I told Steve to bring it in here, bro. Now, listen to me. <laughs> what an unbearable arsehole. <laughs> just, just, is that, is that bloke at work, isn't he? He's just completely draining all the time. <laughs> He's basically, yeah, uh, things are not going well throughout this, the cooking process here. Because he's been he's been brought some obviously quite posh tin tomatoes, but uh, he's going. Oh, we need fresh Italian tomatoes, and the guy quite rightly goes, "You've just you like decided you wanted to do this this morning six hours ago. A, a ridiculous impulsive decision." So I'm like, "You fuck off." <laughs> <laughs> he's what he wants to say, but he's his boss, and as he well knew, he quite fond of sacking people as well. So you've got to just whew, take a deep breath and just press on with it. Um, so do you want to hear him? explaining a bit more to a professional chef how you it's not even a complicated sauce he's making he's basically frying some garlic and adding some tomatoes to it yeah. and he's for some reason trying to explain this to someone who cooks for a living we put a couple of leaves like that now right. okay that's it you give the taste when it's finished you put another couple of leaves fresh yeah when it's when it's when it's not too hot okay but, but to give the smell. That's the taste. The smell laughter when you see. Now, have you seen the basil? You give me the salt. Because in England, you must understand, you have to salt them. Put them. Bravo. Bravissimo. Now, that's the salt. It looks like sugar. Is it salt, or yeah? Yeah, and then you give one. One big spoon of sugar? No, one, yeah, one big spoon of sugar. Can you turn down? Yes. Yeah. Bravo. That's it. Three minutes, and it's fucking finished. That's tomato Italian soup. Straight. Straight. It's fucking difficult. But well, easy. It's difficult. It's, it's, but easy. It's, it's, it's simple, but you have to prepare the red. The red. Right First, the garlic. Yeah. Second, the onion. Yeah. Then a little bit of chili. Don't have to burn. Then the tomato. When it's cooking tomato, 60 minutes. Goodness, that clip made me very tired. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon they've got um, San Mazzano tomatoes knocking about it, in Beeston? It's as well the fact that at one point the the guy who obviously knows what he's doing because everyone goes, "Do you want to turn that down a bit?" And he's just like adjusting things for Chilino. It just really encapsulates the way he clearly worked, which is him just 
barreling about the place, kind of taking the lead, but also needing someone else to just follow him around, tidying up after it and doing the actual work. And it gives you a little insight into what it must have been like working for him as a football manager with him walking around the training ground going, hey, come on, you need to work on the shots. And they're just saying really stupid, basic stuff to people who have been in football for their whole life. I'm just firing you because you've missed or whatever. Oh, Yeah, it probably doesn't quite work because we didn't have a manager at the time, but imagine preparing the season, thinking, all right, yeah, Paddy Kenny in goal, number one, and then suddenly, oh, his birthday. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so we need a new goalkeeper. Fine, okay. Uh, or him cooking for a job interview and forcing you to sit there and eat, eat, eat his pasta whilst he interviews you. But you've did. got to because he's, he's your potential new boss. God. We did win that night. Who was it against? The camp? Bournemouth, a 1-0 win. Oh, was that, that, that one? It had been ages since we'd won as well, so there was a little bit of like, got us out of the bad form, old Chilino's pasta, he should do this every week. Was but that then, when Belusky scored? Uh, or was that the away game? No, that's, that Murphy. was away. Yeah, and then, so it's the game I was in Ken's box for. Right. It was also the the reason he couldn't keep cooking every week was because the FA were like, you you cannot be you he's he had to cease to be a relevant person for the next three months. So I don't know if I just being, did it as a uh, chef. I'm not running the place. <laughs> yeah, if it was a little bit like going undercover that you could. Um, I got a big hat on. Yeah, he could run the club from the kitchen, but I don't. It didn't sound like the chef was going to be too keen on him turning the um, the kitchens into a second office to surreptitiously run Leeds United. I was Ken's box. About six foot tall? Or? Sadly not. Um, it was fine. Got some food in there. It was free. Radio Yorkshire paid for it, which meant kind of I paid for it a little <laughs> bit because that whole operation was funded by Leeds fans one way or another, wasn't it? Yeah. So I think I, I did well to get some money back off that thing. Super duper. Well, that wraps up propaganda for today then, I think, doesn't it? Um, enjoy the game tonight. Try. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We'll try. Actually, I do have a clip of Sunderland. Do you want to hear that oh, before we leave? Then. Okay. Then. Um, the mad mistake. They they lost 5-1 and then they drew 0-0 with Bristol. Um, it sounds like that game was reassuringly end of season-y. So let's just hope they haven't lifted themselves ahead of tonight. I almost fell asleep. But, you know, a little bit of the match. It was a bit boring at the end of the day. It's better than getting beef. 5-1. Two teams on the beach, ready for the end of the season. Great to see Jack Clark back on the pitch probably won't see him next season when he leaves and also it's good to see Adji Leslie back on the pitch so great to see players coming back Leeds away Tuesday night that could be a, a very tough tough game but there we go oh let's hope so Jack Clark don't injure yourself you've got a big move yeah this summer. definitely mm, to take it easy yeah maybe a waking up with a back spasm or similar illness well, too that much was- Red Bull yes that can, that can cause spasms if you do enough, enough of it, I suspect. Um, right, before Rebels lawyers get on me and, uh, and shut this whole thing down, we'll, we'll leave it there. And um, fingers crossed for tonight. Would you take 5-1 again? If they This is for us, by the way. For us, yes, I would. You, you would accept that. Moscow? Yeah, that sounds good. Fingers crossed. We'll see you later. The Square Ball Podcast. 